So if you are a true blue hot rodder at heart today, you're not going to want to miss this episode because we're turning Dale into a shop truck with some pinstripe. So let's get out to the shop and get it done. So there's Dale sitting up on jack stands because I wanted to get it up a little bit higher for Paul. Paul says the higher up it is, the easier it will be for him to work on. He's not a young man anymore, so he wants to get every advantage possible. So before we jump into uh, introducing you to Paul, because he's not here yet, I want to show you the plans for getting Dale converted into a shop truck. See, we've got this space right here that we have to work with. And the idea was, is to keep something between the stainless trim on this truck. And if you guys recall back uh, a little while ago, a few weeks ago on Instagram, I had posted these two pictures uh, of which one we wanted to see on Dale. And overwhelmingly, you guys chose the arched old car. If this is your first time watching my channel, the name of my business is Old Car Auto. We do service work, we sell used cars. So I wanted to use that and play on those words to make Dale a shop truck. So Paul is gonna hand paint old car garage written right there on the door on both sides. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that I want him to do something on the tailgate in relation to my YouTube channel. So I'm thinking right along here, we're gonna have the little YouTube logo and old car guy. One of the neat things about pinstriping is that a lot of people feel it's permanent. It totally isn't. Now with vinyl, yes, you can peel it off. And with this paint, you can clean that off. And after it's been sitting on there for a while, I guess oven cleaner is something that will strip that paint right off. Um, but there are other things that you can do. Now, once the paint is on the truck, and I'll explain this a little bit later, uh, we're going to let that set up for probably a few days, maybe even a week, and then we're going to come back and we're going to distress it. And we're not going to use any chemicals as far as I know, uh, because Paul says that if you use a little bit of an abrasive buffing wheel, um, you can just kind of lightly go over that and as the paint kind of wears a little bit, it'll give it the aged look and you can stop at any age that you want or at any uh, amount of buffing. So. That's the plan, is we're going to get that done. Paul should be here any minute, and then we're going to set up some time lapse so you guys can watch him at his art. So Paul's just getting started here with his measurements and getting his uh, arch, you know, the right arch that he needs, and I figured I'd sit down and talk to him for a second and see if I can't get a little bit more information from him. So Paul, how long have you been uh, doing artwork? 38 years. 38 years, and we're, we're, what got you started? Uh just on my own yeah <laughs> just on my own i had no idea that i could do this yeah and it turned into a passion yeah paul has a regular presence down at the local flea markets and he does a lot of different paintings on uh, signs and uh, he does a lot of pin striping and he does a lot of you know just freehand stuff uh, he does really good work at it and paul was just telling us a story about um one of the cities he used to live in and doing a lot of the mural projects out there and uh, wanting to possibly do something in our town to represent the history here uh, in St. Stephen. So Paul, over the years, how many murals do you think you've done? Um, probably about maybe 60. Wow. 60 murals, maybe more. I've got pictures of a lot of the stuff that I've done. And we're talking like the sides of buildings type of murals sides of buildings most of them have been inside buildings on the drywall you know large because the companies wanted uh, their product advertised on there and some old scenes of the, the town and city yep. yeah well we're not going to bother you too much i know you got some work to do here and uh, i'm going to set up the camera to do a little bit of a time lapse so you guys can watch paul at work
So as you can see from the time lapse, he's been working away at getting this thing centered and getting the letters organized. And because of the glare from outside, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to pick that up too much. But he's just getting ready to mix up some paint. And I think what we're going to go with for color is the main body of the, of the stenciling is going to be done in the buckskin, the original paint on the truck and then we'll outline it with something else. So he's gonna get ready to do that and get some uh, paint on this door. So it looks like what he's doing now is he's mixing up his paint and in layman's terms, we've got yellow and brown and I'm sure there's some other specific colors for that. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the buckskin color, uh, which is the main body color of this. And he's got pretty close. Uh, but he's, I guess he's going to try and lighten it up a little bit with some white there. So once he gets that mixed up, we'll take a look and see what he's got to offer. Things are starting to come together. He's uh, getting ready to start on the uh, second half, the lower portion of the door. And uh, so far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. But having said all of that, I'm not gonna show you any more until it's done. So you guys are gonna have to wait and see in the next scene and you'll get the finished product. So Paul's just getting ready to start on the passenger side here now and he's all done on the driver's side. Let's go over and take a peek and see how it turned out. And there we are folks, we've got the uh, kind of the tan color, we've got a little bit of design in here and we've got the white stenciling around the outside and I think it stands out just perfect, it's not too much. And like I said, when we're done, after this is dried for a day or so, we'll come back with the buffer and we'll kind of age that up a bit. But I'm really impressed with how that turned out and I hope you guys can see that as good as I do. Well, now that we've got this thing out here in the sunlight, let's take a closer look at this paint job. I don't think you can get too much more subtle than what that is, but I do like it. It's not bold, it blends in, and once we get the uh, aging done to it, I think it'll fit and suit this truck perfectly. Now, a couple of the things that we have left to do is I think we're gonna put some cab lights and a vent visor across the top of it, and uh, we'll get some big trucker antennas for those mirrors because I think <laughs> I'm not going to do that. There's really only one last thing that I want to do to the exterior of this truck, and that is tuck the bumpers. Um, you know, when we did the brake pedal uh, fix the other day, that was at the recommendation of uh, Brian Harrison at Harrison Rod and Custom down in Greenville, Tennessee. Uh, been messaging him back and forth. And uh, this bumper tuck is something that he does at his shop quite frequently on these square bodies. And there is a video, and I'll put that video right here that he did for one of uh, uh, the trucks on United by Trucks, and I believe it was uh, two trucks run, TTR, his truck, uh, that they kind of did that little tuck uh, on, and it really kind of sets it off. If you can see back here, there is quite a gap between the back of the truck, the body, and, uh, and the bumper. And if we go up front, we got kind of the same thing going on, and actually, uh, if you've got a keen eye, you'll see that this driver's side is in further than the passenger side. It's actually sticking out a little bit more. So whoever put that bumper on uh, didn't bother to uh, line it up. They just kind of put it on there. So we're gonna get those bumpers tucked sometime in the near future before we put this thing away uh, for winter. Of course, that's a few months down the road. We're only September, early September. And I should be able to drive this right through till November. And somebody asked in a previous video, um, are you gonna store Dale for the winter? And the answer is yes. Um, one of the things that we are doing, my wife and I right now, we're in the process of looking for a piece of property outside of town uh, for a couple of reasons. Is one, I do want a little more storage for vehicles and some more room to work on them. Uh, we're also looking for a little bit of land, some acreage uh, that we can go out and have a little bit of fun with as part of the channel, but that we can kind of be a little bit private. 
and, and not so much into the uh, prying eye of neighbors and all that stuff. So uh, that is something that's going to be happening on the channel sometime in the near future. We are actually actively looking and we will get our house for sale here in the near future. Uh, keep in mind the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is still on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern and 9 Atlantic and I share that responsibility with Grant Tommy who is straight Six Fan. And I'll put his channel up there in the corner so you guys can head over there and subscribe to him as well and that way you'll get notified every time we go live. A couple of car guys talking cars having a lot of fun. Having said all that, stay focused on the windshield not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. I really hope you enjoy this as much as I do. So stay tuned for the next video.